Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava and welcome to my reading vlog for January romance releases. I thought it would be really fun to kind of document throughout the month every time I pick up a new release throughout the month. Um, so at the end of December, I made a January most anticipated releases video where I listed off a lot of new releases that are coming out in January in the romance genre that I am excited for. And I thought every time I pick up one of those, we'll vlog about it throughout the month and you'll get to this vlog full of new releases where I tell you whether or not these books are worth reading. I actually just finished my first one <laughs> for this vlog. So I thought I'd talk to you about it. I wanted to update sooner. I wanted to update maybe like halfway mark, but I couldn't put it down. I could not put it down. I had to like fly through it because I was obsessed. Okay, I actually got an arc of this book. So advanced reader copy of this book. Um, it actually comes out tomorrow when I'm filming this. It's already out for y'all. But this came out for y'all on January 7th. Today is the 6th. I finished this last night. Obsessed. This is Whispers of the Deep by Emma Ham. I absolutely adore Emma Ham. She writes fantastic, amazing, spoon-worthy, magical fantasy romance books. They are very immersive. I love them a whole heck of a lot. And when I saw this cover and I heard that she was writing a mermaid, merman romance, I just about crapped my pants. I was so <laughs> ready for it, chomping at the bit for it. So when she said that arcs were available, I was like, give it to me now. I want it now, give it to me. And uh, I got one. Thank you so much, Emma, for sending this my way. Um, and I am obsessed with it. I need the next book like yesterday it was teased at the end of this book what's gonna happen kind of in book number two and I'm like I need that now please Emma like please I need that now okay so <laughs> this book okay let me talk about what this book is about so our heroine of this story her name is Mira and she is a human woman and this takes place on a planet that's not earth from what I can assume and basically it is not safe to live above the sea because there's hurricanes tsunamis 24 7 over the like all land and so it is not habitable like you cannot live on land on this planet and so the humans of this world who have like traveled to this world i know it's a different world but it's not sci-fi like don't get it mixed up i think this is like a fantasy book anyway so the like first settlers of this planet whatever um decided to create underwater cities um that they could live in and so it's kind of like Atlantis where there's cities inside these like glass domes in the middle of the sea. But the mer creatures, they have like specific names, but I don't remember what they're called. Like the humans call them a specific name. I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, I'm just gonna call them mermaids. Um, so the mermaids of this world, like they are native to the planet, right? And they live in the sea and their home is the ocean, right? And they are not happy with these humans because they have had to damage part of the ocean in order to build their underwater cities that are like hundreds and thousands of years old and so for years these mermaids have tried to overthrow these humans take down their city damage it as much as possible like break the glass flood the city like they don't want these humans to be there so the beginning of the story starts out with mira she is a mechanic or like a mechanical engineer kind of on this uh in one of the cities named beta and one of the like dome parts of the city that she's in has a crack in it and so she's like tasked to go fix it and while she's fixing it a mermaid swims up and sees the crack and uh, sees this as the perfect opportunity to break part of the city um and so that's how these two characters first meet is he's literally trying to take down her city and kill her like he full-on tries to kill her and that's how it starts and then this turns into um, this merman's people finding out about what he did and this human woman um, and is like, okay, we're gonna task you with this thing where you're going to take this woman and you are going to learn everything you can about humans so we can overthrow them. And so that's just what he does. He finds her swimming outside of the um, like the dome one day to do repairs and stuff. And he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to in like an underwater cave. There is a huge language barrier. They don't speak each other's language okay so y'all know me i am obsessed with that trope i love that um there's size difference galore he's freaking huge he is ginormous <laughs> um and she's this tiny little human woman and man does she have some spunk to her though she is not taking this crap from him like she will full on go and uh risk it with sharks and get away from her and y'all know me i do not ever um, I don't know. I don't mess with sharks. I have a huge, huge shark phobia. And so I was like, kind of on the edge of my seat a little bit too reading this because I'm like, 
I don't mess with sharks. I have like PTSD with sharks. Anyway, um, I don't mess with them. I have a huge phobia. Thank goodness there was no sharks in here. <laughs> no sharks. Thank you, Emma Ham. Thank you. Um, please, please don't put them in your other ones too. <laughs> I don't want them. I don't want them. I have a huge phobia. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this is their romance. They fully plan to kill each other. And uh, man, they fall for each other instead. It is so good. I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm, I can't stop thinking about this book. I need it. And tomorrow for me, her special edition with like sprayed edges comes out. She's uh, selling them on her website. And I am getting that. I need that in my life. So I put like a like a alarm on my phone for the time it's supposed to drop. And I'm like, I'm getting that. I might be broke, but I'm getting that book. <laughs> I'm getting it. So far, I've read like five books this year. This is definitely my favorite. It is so good. This book is definitely worth the read. If you love fantasy romance, like um, like magical creatures, like it is, oh, it's so good. Please pick this one up. It's actually a few weeks later. I think I filmed that first clip like at the beginning of January and now like the 22nd yes no the 23rd oops um that's just because i've been in the historical fantasy mood and i feel like a lot of my books that were on my most anticipated for january video are contemporary books um and i even did some searching online there's not a lot of fantasy books that come out in January, but I found another one. Don't worry, I'll talk about that book in a second, but I ended up finding one. It took me a while to find one. I kept diving into books and if I am not invested by the first chapter at this point this year, I'm putting it down. Like, I don't care. I don't put it on Goodreads. If I like it after the first chapter or two, then I'll put it on Goodreads and give it a shot. But a lot of these books that I've been reading recently, I give it like a shot, like a chapter or two. One novella, I even got like halfway through. A novella, normally I just finish novellas because they're novellas no like i'm like no i'm not gonna like this book i'm gonna give it like three stars what's the point of me finishing this yeah unfortunately that's how i've kind of felt recently with books but i'm listening to myself and i'm like finally read things you want to read if you're not liking it don't finish it it doesn't matter about a good reads goal do not care about that okay so um what we're gonna do first is i have some earrings to haul for y'all so i was in a little bit of a um mood <laughs> At the beginning of January, I was, I'm still kind of a little bit in that mood. Um, my anxiety has not been the best recently, honestly. You maybe couldn't even tell by my videos because I feel like my videos are a, a huge safe space for me. I've been doing this for like six and a half years at this point. And um, talking to a camera, talking to my phone is really therapeutic for me. So people probably maybe even don't notice on camera, but I have like sometimes crippling anxiety and i also have like a subcategory of social anxiety and that has been like not the best ever um recently i know that some people don't really love to discuss medication but i last year started medication for my anxiety which i've had since i was a little girl like my family can attest to that my childhood friends can attest that i've always had anxiety and specifically social anxiety this past year i started medication and it was working fantastically well. Like in 2023, I went on eight dates. And before that point, I had not gone on a single date since I was 18. I am 25 now. <laughs> I think that says like, maybe the medicine is working. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just me growing up. I'm 25 now, but I felt like the medication was kind of working. And um, this past month, it's been rough. I've had a lot of sad days and a lot of frustrating days. I know this can be like, not the best thing to hear, to, to listen about, to watch i guess um but i'm being honest with y'all so my mental health was not the best and i wanted to make myself feel happy but some one of my triggers this past month when it comes to my anxiety is money discussion of money saving money and i'm like i need something to make myself feel happy what is that going to be i'm gonna have to probably spend a little money to make myself happy so i decided to buy a bunch of very cheap like a dollar or under earrings online and they came in yesterday completely brightened my mood i was so happy i was literally i feel like i was stimming i was so happy <laughs> like hand flapping like i was aesthetic i'm so happy because they're so cute um if y'all don't know on top of books i collect earrings that mirror right there is actually like a like a little mini like closet thing like the mirror opens and inside is just racks and racks of earrings 
things because I love them. I love collecting them, like pretty ones, unique ones, whatever the case may be. So I was like, let's buy some really cheap, cute looking earrings online. And um, it made me happy. So let's haul them for you. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna be putting them on because it'll take a while, um, but I'm gonna go like one by one. Like, look at how cute some of these are. And some people would be like, those are weird. I don't care. I'm the employee at my job that everyone knows wears the funky outfits like Miss Frizzle. Like, that is me. That, that's me. Okay, that is me at work. So, um, and in real life, I do, I do wear like the flowery, the dresses. Like, I had to wear pants today for a uniform because my position, sometimes you have to wear a uniform. So I had to wear my uniform yesterday. I had to wear pants. And a few people commented, they're like, I don't think I've ever seen you in pants before. And I'm like, mm-hmm, I didn't choose this. <laughs> Oh, I did not choose this. Um, when I'm out about, I love wearing dresses and skirts. It's so much more freeing than dumb pants that are tight on your legs. Anyway, I like wearing fun, funky earrings. Okay, so this is my first one. <laughs> Look, they're little chickens with boots on them. Are you joking? That is so cute. And these are really lightweight, which are nice. But they had a bunch of different chicken ones on there with like cowboy boots. That is so cute. Okay, that's number one. Um, I found these. Whoop. They were very pretty. I don't have any in this color. I like to diversify and find ones in like fun colors, but it's kind of like this sage green with like this flower printed on it. It's kind of like embossed in it. Next, I thought these would be perfect for like Valentine's Day. They're really cute. I thought of Samantha, obviously, when I bought these. I was like, I gotta get them. It makes me think of Samantha. But they're hearts. This is the top part is a heart too. And they're strawberries. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be wearing those on Valentine's Day at work. Okay, I might not have a boyfriend, but I can still celebrate love. Okay, um, and then these, I was so excited. It's a, oh, sorry, I have to get a grip on it, <laughs> a mixer. And it says, bake my day, like both of them. My only issue with this, this pair, is that they're both facing the same way. I like, like them to face, like this one faces this way, so this one should face the other way, you know what I mean? The chickens do that, like the chickens, they face different ways, so I wish these did, that's my only like critique, but I got these for like a buck, okay? But like, look at how cute. I love baking, so. I love that. Then I have these cute ones. Look at how pretty they are. I love them. So cute. And these are nice too because I'm not afraid of breaking them because they're kind of like a bendable material, which is nice because my earrings actually fall a lot out of my ears. Okay, Um. next. Perfect for me on top of the baking. We have macarons. Macarons are like my absolute favorite if y'all did not know. I love macarons. I have these flowery ones. I'm a flower girl. I love flower patterns on like everything. So this flower pattern, super pretty. And my last pair I'm gonna put in my ears because it's very fitting. It says read. Mm -hmm. It says read, love that. So going in the ears, <laughs> um, that's my last pair. So yeah, I I spent like $7 maybe <laughs> on these. So I am a happy clam with these earrings. They made me happy, made my mental health feel happier. It's just hard. There are some things that you know will make you happy, but it costs money and then money triggers my anxiety really badly. So it's like a double-edged sword for me, which is unfortunate. But enough about me and um, my life struggles. <laughs> Let's get into a book reading update. I have read a new release that um, is actually coming out in January. I got another ARC. The author actually reached out to me to send me this book and um, it's a novella. It is titled Follow Me to the Yew Tree by Desiree M. Nicoli. Nic Nicolai? I'm so sorry. I think Nikolai sounds better. I think it's Nikolai. <laughs> Nicoli, what was I thinking? Nikolai, I think that's what it is. Um, okay, so the cover, absolutely beautiful. I'm not gonna lie though, when I've seen this cover around and I honestly thought based on the cover, this would be YA. I don't know why the characters on the cover like look young to me, but it is not YA. Do not think this is YA. There is hot stuff in here, okay? Um, this is only 87 pages, I think. 
the author was so sweet, reached out to me on Instagram, asked if I wanted to read her book. And I was like, yes. And this is perfect because I needed another book for this vlog. So this one is a romance between, um, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering these names, by the way, I think they're Irish, um, Ariane and Ellen. Ellen is the hero's name. Um, she, he even makes like a funny joke about how his name is very feminine. And then they meet one day while traveling the countryside and decide to travel together. And this one definitely has like a whimsical air to it, which I really appreciate. I haven't read a lot of like whimsical romances recently, especially in like the fantasy genre. This one is like historical, but fantasy. It's one of those like historical fantasy books, how this book is takes place in like the 1800s at some point but there's also that magical element in here that I do not want to spoil I will say give you a little hint death is involved in some way death is his own character I know that like death as a character is a definite buzzword for a lot of people so I wanted to mention that in here I don't really want to say much plot wise more because it is a novella it's under 100 pages and I would not want to spoil it um but the reason why this author reached out to me is because she heard that I would be interested in the chronic illness representation and Y'all know me, of course I am. This is own voices for ulcerative colitis, the hero in here. This takes place in the 1800s, so they don't know what's going on, um, but he has all the symptoms that someone would have if they have ul ulcerative colitis in today's day and age. The chronic illness part was definitely my favorite as someone who is chronically ill. I really always appreciate own voices, chronic illness representation, and it was really cool to see it in like more of a historical setting because I don't think I've read a chronic illness in a historical setting, I've read disability representation, but I don't think I've read a chronic illness, which now I can have that like checked off a little bit, but I'd love more like chronic illness representation in like historical books. I just now am like tr starting to find fantasy ones, which I need more, please, I need more. So I really felt for our hero in this book and I really loved our heroine for how like amazing she was handling everything um, because people who are crying, you could, you could see like through the heroine's perspective because it's only told in the heroine's perspective, this book is. Um, you could like see that the hero was very hesitant to open up to her about like what's going on with him health wise because it's not really something attractive to talk about. Like, been there, done that, I understand. So um, I really loved just how patient and understanding she was with everything that he was going through. Tropes for this book, I wanna to mention too. Um, it's a historical fantasy, chronic illness rep, it's a novella, it's whimsical, and it is also magical. So I really enjoyed this one. If you want a novella that has like a whimsical aspect to it, that has also like fantasy vibes, um, I definitely recommend this one when this one comes out. Let me check the date to see which, when this one comes out oh january 30th this one comes out january 30th so i think this vlog is coming up before coming out before that point so be sure to pick this novella up when the time comes and um if you thought this was ya based on the cover like me don't worry it's not ya it's not it has been the most wild week probably of my life when it comes to my job we have not had on it no the wildest month y'all so January has been an absolute F S show, okay, um, at my job. Also, sorry if I sound congested. Um, the weather changes in Texas. Texas has horrible weather, specifically in January, and um, like the heat are coming on and off, the weather getting dry and rainy, like day in and day out, like it has messed with me. So, <laughs> um, it's been wild at work. First two days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, um, was downpouring rain for days straight like it was like flooding in the sidewalk and so you have to like walk on top of pallets to get somewhere like it it like the drainage system where i work it's not good um so there was that like downpour for days and then on wednesday i woke up and i was feeling like awful and i never call in for work because i like to keep my day saved up in case i have another flare-up because that's whenever you have a chronic illness you think like that or you're like I could have a flare up again at any moment. I'm gonna save my days up to make sure that like that doesn't happen. But I, my throat was feeling really swollen and I was very worried that I had strep throat. I called into work and then, um, oh, that's my microwave, that's my dinner. <laughs> anyway, um, I called into work and um, I was, they, they, it didn't really matter anyway, cause I woke up too and um, there was like a late start to work because of the flooding conditions in my area. Like everywhere was flooding. And then work got out early because 
another alert came out like this is dangerous now like you need to go home now <laughs> yeah then they left early so i don't think that day is gonna be counted against me which love that for me um and then um thursday literally like 10 minutes after i walk into the door i'm literally trying to turn on the lights in my office and like they're flickering and i'm like what is there a bad bulb or something and they completely turn off and i'm like what is going on the power goes out a tree fell on a power line in our area and like the whole area out of power we did not have power until noon basically we just sat around and did nothing until that point and then friday it was fine today <laughs> we were like knocking on wood like please do not do not mess anything up like please so it's been a wild week it's been a this week has felt like a month long it gets felt like a month long i'm exhausted so um yesterday i will say though i made like probably the best cupcakes they've ever made they're so good i could not find a gluten-free creme brulee cupcake because i was just craving that i've never had one but i saw one on my pinterest and i was like "Ooh, that looks good let me see if there's a gluten -free recipe online there wasn't and so i kind of like altered one that already existed to make it gluten-free so that's what i did yesterday i wish i had more but like i was selling them to somebody so i want to make more it just it took a while to make them <laughs> so i loved making those and then i've been doing some reading obviously this is a reading vlog so i gotta update you um my last new release for this vlog is going to be one that like many people have recommended to me so love that this is ballad of sea and sky by madeline elliott so this is like all the other books in this vlog i'm making sure to pick like fantasy books so this is a fantasy one it came actually out on the last day of december of this past year i consider it to to still be a new release because it's less than a month old you know even though it did not come out in january i don't care i wanted to read this book okay um because like caitlin messaged me i think and lizelle messaged me and i was like uh sold because apparently our heroine is like this selkie i've realized through this book like mermaids and selkies are not the same thing because like apparently mermaids like have like the fish tail right and selkies have the tail of a seal which i was like what I did not like put two and two together. Maybe I'm dumb, but I did not realize that. <laughs> so she's a Selkie. Her and her people, she's like kind of like a princess of the land. And she's always been fascinated with sirens, um, which again, I always consider sirens to be like mermaids who lure men to death, right? Um, but like this author's like switched it around to be like um, sirens don't have like a tail. They're not like mermaid like, they have wings. They're like, kind of like fae. They're maybe a fae, but they do also sing to like control people, creatures, whatever the case may be. So our heroine's always been fascinated by sirens. And then her father one day captures one, like the Selkies and the sirens of his, of her land. Um, They're at war, like they do not get along. And her father captures one one day. She goes to like look at him because she's very curious, you know, and he ends up actually like kidnapping her instead and taking her back to his people. So it's kind of like a double kidnap <laughs> romance. I'm like 50% of the way through this. I was recommended this, number one, because of like the fantasy stuff that I love. But also the heroine in here has asthma. Asthma in a fantasy romance book? Like, yes, please. Normally, Selkies can hold their breath anywhere from like 30 to 40 minutes long. She can only hold her breath for five minutes because of her asthma and even shorter than that. Um, So I just love how the author is like incorporating asthma into this fantasy realm and these magical creatures. Like... I really love it. And then the hero, even though he kidnaps her, he realizes that she has like breathing problems and he like makes sure to go out of his way to like buy the things that she needs to help her breathe. Like there's a certain tea that helps her, like certain peppermint tea, I think. Things like that to like ease her a little bit, even in her captivity. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> and I also really love this one so far because I love pirates. So these sirens are basically like pirates. The guy... He's like captain of all these sirens on this pirate ship. I'm obsessed with it. it takes place on a pirate ship and I love that. So um, I'm really loving this so far. I did take a pause on it for a second because I had a hold like about to expire on Libby for a book that I really wanted to read. So I wanted to get to that one first, but now I'm ready to dive back in and I hope to finish this either like tonight or this weekend at some point. It's Sunday. Please excuse my bun my hair um it's sunday it's my chill day i don't do anything on sundays except for like sit at my computer and i have my tv show that i'm currently binging and i do booktube stuff or i write stuff whatever i want to do 
um, I craft, I puzzle, whatever I want to do. So I don't put on makeup. I don't go anywhere. So that's my Sundays. And so that's why I look like this, but it's fine. I love this. This is awesome. So, um, I have finished my last book for this new releases vlog and I really enjoyed it. I didn't realize until maybe 80% of the way through, I was like, oh wait, there's a lot that still has to happen. I forgot this is a duet and the second one isn't out yet. So I can't wait for the next one to come out whenever that one does come out. I need to go look that up. But this book kind of reminded me of a few books that I do really like. So I'll tell you what books that I'm currently thinking of with this book. I would say it gives me Akamath vibes in a sense where one character is hiding the faded mate aspect, okay? Um, it reminds me kind of of Radiance by Grace Draven when there's two different types of like species and they don't get along and they're not together. However, it's not really arranged marriage. Like that's the only part that like reminds me of Radiance. There's also a forced proximity trope. They're stuck in this like abandoned island together because of reasons. Um, the hero is like a siren pirate which is fun i love me pirates i love me a pirate if you didn't know i love pirates i also of course loved the caretaking when it came to the heroine's asthma um she would have like ragged breathing moments at times and the hero would just stop everything to help her out i love that i love when there's caretaking when it's with a chronic illness disability whatever the case may be also her power is really interesting because i think there's more there than we know or the heroine even knows about the powers that she holds which was really cool and there's also what are they called kelpie in here i can't remember what book series had kelpie in it i think it was was it akatar i think it was a sarah j mass book that had kelpie in it i can't remember which one if it was throne of glass or akatar i can't remember like kelpie are really fun to read about because <laughs> they're like these water horse creatures that like suck you to the depths of the ocean <laughs> it could be it, i think that's fun like that's fun like i love like fun creatures like that being incorporated into romances so um i would say this vlog was an overall success i really enjoyed all three of these new releases i can't wait to read more from all three authors i've already read from emma ham before um so i was already anticipating me loving that book but these other two books i've never read from those authors before and I feel like I'm meeting my goal already of reading more new to me authors this year. If you want more like lower end fantasy romance books, I recommend these. They're really fun. And especially like that first one, Whispers of the Deep. That book is living in my mind rent free ever since I finished it. The cover for the second one came out and it is absolutely stunning. Like I need that in my life like right now emma please give it to me the covers for this year is also fantastic because i've seen emma ham's tattoos they're beautiful they're stunning they're inspired by fairy tales if you've seen emma ham's tattoos and she got her tattoo artist to make these covers like to make the art for these covers and it's beautiful i love it the other two books were fantastic as well so if you would love to read a fantasy book that came out recently i definitely recommend all three of these i think the yew tree one the second book that i read that one doesn't come out till the end of the month so keep your eyes out let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and also leave down below any newly released fantasy books that you really like or ones that you're anticipating i know we're all anticipating sjm's new one and i just placed my pre-order for that so hopefully that'll come in fairly soon yeah let me know what books you're looking forward to reading in the fantasy genre and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a mermaid emoji in the comment section down below thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all